Our guests are as far apart on the Contra question as American intellectuals can be. John Silver, the president of Boston University, was a member of the Kissinger Commission that diagnosed a security threat in Central America. Noam Chomsky, the language theorist at MIT, argues in his new book titled Turning the Tide that U.S. intervention in Central America is the acute case of our general misuse and misrule of the third world. I'd like you to begin, President Silver. Address yourself to the waivers, if there are any in the U.S. Senate. Why would you vote for the Contra money? Well, the Senate of the United States has traditionally been in favor of supporting democratic forces as opposed to totalitarian forces. Uh, and if they continue that practice, they're going to vote against the Sandinistas, and they're going to vote in favor of the Contras. On October 15th, the Sandinistas passed an edict that suspends the protection against the search of homes without a warrant, that suspends the privacy of mail and allows for censorship of mail. They suspended the right of free assembly. They have su suspended all freedom of the press. Uh, they have continued their harassment of their people and suspended virtually all democratic rights. The October 15th decree is much more restrictive and comprehensive than the decree that Hitler passed in February 28, 1933, when he ended the Democratic Republic of Weimar. Uh, and uh, once you see this totalitarian nature of the regime, which was apparent uh, since 1979 in September uh, and has continued ever since then, it is time for the Senate of the United States to support the Democrats. Noam Chomsky, in a short speech to the U.S. Senate, why would you be again the Contra money? Well, as even the uh, most ardent supporters of the Contras now, now concede, this is what they call a proxy army, uh, which is entirely, which is attacking Nicaragua from foreign bases, is entirely dependent on its masters for direction and support, uh, has never put forth a political program, uh, has created no base of uh, political support within the country, uh, and is, uh, it has led uh, its entire military, almost its entire top military command as uh, Somozist officers. Uh, it's, uh, has its military uh, achievements so far consist of a long and horrifying series of very well-documented uh, torture and mutilation and atrocities and essentially nothing else. Uh, the administration, administration officials are now openly conceding uh, in public that the main function of the Contras is to retard or reverse the rate of social reform uh, in Nicaragua and to try to create, to, to terminate the openness of that society. The state of siege, for example, uh, which was imposed last uh, fall and which is very mild, I should say. There's much political opening in Nicaragua, as everyone there up to the American ambassador will tell you, uh, that uh, corresponds roughly to the state of siege which has been in place in El Salvador since uh, early 1980, except that in El Salvador, it, correspond, it, it has been associated with a huge massacre of tens of thousands of people, uh, destruction of the press, and so on and so forth, uh, whereas in Nicaragua, it is a reaction to a war that we are carrying out against them with precisely the purpose of trying to retard social reform and to uh, restrict the possibilities of an open and developing society, and that's a cruel and savage policy which we should terminate. In a complicated subject, I'd love to are you, on, you know, are you going to continue th that, that series of plain falsehoods? That's a series of falsehoods, the like of which I've never seen compacted in such a small period of time. The massacres that have occurred in Nicaragua have been the massacres by the Sandinistas of the Mosquito Indians. The, the repression there is massive. It is, more, it is more serious than anything that we have seen in Central America or in any Latin American country to date. It is a genuine dictatorship imposed there, and to describe the leaders of the Contras as being supporters of Somoza is simply fabrication. Robello, Cruz, uh, Colero, Chamorro are not Somocistas and never have been. And when you take the leadership of the army of the Contras, some of them were members of the National Guard, but then if you're going to object to that, which would be highly unreasonable because that was an army that wasn't simply followers or supporters of Somosistas. It is, Im uh, it is important to remember that Modesta Rojas, the vice chairman of the, of the Air Force of the Sandinistas, was also a member of the National Guard and a very large number of members of the National Guard 
are, they, are the ones who are the coordinators of the bloc committees that imposed the dictatorship by the Sandinistas. This is, this is a series of, of distortions and fabrications, and uh, the, the effort of the Sandinistas to discredit the Contras by the manufacture of atrocities is now a point that has been very well documented. So, I'm trying to respond, to to respond yeah. among other things, to the well, let, Mr. Silver's original the picture of the totalitarian... Well, let, let's just first of all uh, talk about the facts. Uh, I stated again that the military leadership of the Contras is almost entirely drawn from the top, uh, from the uh, Somoza's National so Guard. In fact, it's 46 out of 48 of the top military commanders, according to Edgar Chamorro. Soldiers who just cited. Are, soldiers These are not citers. This is the top military commander. Uh, excuse, and, look, and Mrs. Aquino, I, excuse me. I let you. Is, no, I let you, you go you, on. You did I let you? You engaged in a series of fabrications of truth, and it's time that somebody I, had the opportunity of correcting your yeah. historical mis misstatements well, let, let while me, you're still around. It, it, no, no, Mr. Chum, no, Mr. No, Mr. Silver has a very good reason for not wanting me to talk, and that is that he knows what the truth is. He doesn't want to start. May I have a chance? To say now, it, just let me it, finish. It, it is his Marcos, time. Marcos's army is the very army that helped Aquino into power. So when you try to take on the National Guard, as if the National Guard was Somacistas, you misstate the case. But you let, also let overlook the, the, the fact it's that there are plenty of National Guard members who are no. supporting the Sandinistas. Mr. Chum, now you go ahead and destroy now, the truth Now let again. me let, see here. You're having an action, a good example of totalitarianism. That is to ensure. That the, that the I'm the first one that stopped your monopoly on it's, misinformation. Uh, uh, it's, the it's, idea it's, it's that history. I have a monopoly of misinformation, the American press, is a little ridiculous. No, let me re really, I control the American press. Uh, the, uh, let me repeat, the, let's go back to the facts. 46 out of the 48 top uh, military commanders of the, uh, of the uh, Contras are uh, Somozist officers. You can find that in a congressional report. You can find it from Edgar Chamorro, who was the CIA-appointed spokesman. Uh, that's exactly what I said. It's exactly true. As for the idea that the Sandinistas have con carried out massacres on a par with those that we have been carrying out in Central America, this is really astonishing. In El Salvador, the number of people massacred since 1978, is, or since it's 1979 when we moved in in force, is on the order of 60,000. In Guatemala, where we incidentally have been supporting it all the way through with military aid, which never terminated and are now supporting it enthusiastically, the number of people massacred is on the order of 100,000. In uh, Mr. Silber referred to the Mosquito Indians, who were badly treated, I should say. Uh, the figures are that approximately 60 or 70 were killed, uh, many more than that. It, whereas, on, in, in contrast, about five or 6,000 people have been killed, and I don't mean killed. This is not garden variety killing. This is torture, murder, and mutilation massively documented in great detail by our forces. Now, there, there are crimes of the Sandinistas, there's no doubt, but they are undetectable in comparison with the crimes of the government. I'd like to go back supported. to two central arguments that this whole thing turns on. One is the notion that Sandinist Nicaragua poses a security threat to the United States and to this hemisphere. Secondly, that we owe it to the so-called Democrats and the, the democratic notion to help people who are carrying our standard in the region. John Silber, are these equal arguments, and do you support them both? Well, I don't support the presence of about 6,500 so uh, Soviet and Cuban troops in Nicaragua. I don't support the presence of 24 armed helicopter gunships supplied by the Soviet Union to Nicaragua, or 150 battle tanks, or about 1,200 trucks. Uh, and 300 but what ground the air missiles. That it's a security threat to this country. Well, it's not a security threat yet, and neither was Hitler a security threat when he th when he suspended all uh, freedoms of the Germans in February 28, 1933. He wasn't even a security threat that was serious in 1936 when he rearmed the Rhineland. Uh, but by the time that the Allies got around to recognizing that he was a threat, it cost us tens of millions of lives, and it took six years in which to defeat him. Now, at, at the present time, we can put an end to the Sandinista dictatorship in Central America without using a single American life. All we have to do is help pay for the firemen. There's a fire going on down there. We don't have to put the fire out, but we're asked to, pay to help pay for the firemen. If we wait and we decide to do nothing until the Soviets establish a land base there and it develops as it will develop if we allow it to happen, we will then have to face the fact of a possibility of war. It is not a present threat, it is a vector. If, if people don't have sense enough to understand that a small fire in a room is a threat, not because it's a small fire, but because small fires have a way of becoming big fires, uh, then we haven't learned anything from history.